Hi there. I'm Sarah, senior copywriter with Scalepad. I'm here talking today with Ash. He is the senior product manager at Quoter. He's going to fill us in on what's new at Quoter for July 2024. What have you got for us, Ash? Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, quite a bit. As usual, we are pushing out a lot of code and trying to make the features that we push out high value to our partners. And I think this uh, cycle is no different. So at a high level, we pushed out two major things. Uh, the first is multi-stage manager approvals. So I can dive into that in more detail in a minute. Secondly, we made a number of improvements to our Halo integration. So continue collaborating with those guys. Great team over there. And I think partners are going to see a lot of value in the changes we've made. Well, let's get into that first uh, item you were talking about. Yeah, sounds good. So, I mean, it's not uh, it's not all that common where you have a salesperson that you want to just send out quotes that haven't been vetted at all. So, you know, we've got a new staff person or you want your sales team to operate within certain constraints like margin requirements on one time or recurring items, even down to the level of specific items being on the quote. We basically look at a number of different factors on your quote and there's rules that you can configure and qualify and you can build a manager approval policy around that structure. And that just helps you put some constraints in place. So you make sure that whatever your policies are, you're not sending quotes out the door that could be accepted, could be paid for, that don't match those policies. And, and maybe again, it's around making sure that you are capturing enough margin to cover your costs or to cover changes in hardware costs between the time you send the quote and the time the quote's accepted. So things like that, or maybe dollar value. Maybe quotes under a certain threshold don't need approval, but if you're over 10,000, 50,000, million, whatever it might be, at that point in time, you want the CEO or someone above that salesperson to take a look and make sure everything looks good. And so we've had that functionality for a while, but it's always been or logic. You can have a number of different individuals get emailed when it quote needs approval, um, gets published, and all those individuals can um, dive in and take a look at it. The first one to approve it uh, allows that quote to be sent off to the end customer. Now, what we've added is and logic here around the, the number of people that needs to actually approve it. So you can, you can say, I don't just want one approval. I actually want you know, the manager and the CEO to approve it. Or I want the manager and the legal team to approve it. Whatever it might be, you can add any number of different stages to your manager approval policy. So again, you can go to person one, person two, person three, person four, however many you need. And we've done a really nice job of highlighting where the specific quote is in that approval workflow. That's very visible from the UI. We've added a lot of nice touches to just how the experience is. You're notified who is going to next after you approve. All the feedback from every approver is tracked through the cycle and visible in the history of the quote. So really just adding a lot of a lot of value to larger organizations, I would say, that really have a, a few more constraints they want to put on those quotes that are going out the door and they want more eyes on those quotes. That's awesome. It sounds like this is going to give quota partners a lot more flexibility and customization around that control aspect of, um, of the final approval. Exactly. You want that oversight, right? And even though we've had a lot of value driven from that feature already, we've had the feature for a number of years. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of our competitors had similar features as well. It's kind of table stakes. You kind of need a bit of manager approval in the product. But this does take it to the next level where you're not, you know, you're not so constrained in just having a single approver. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so tell us about the Halo updates. Yeah, a lot of work went into Halo in the past six weeks. So basically we added uh, opportunity creation. So that was a big limitation before. You had to start in Halo, create the opportunity there, and then you could find the opportunity from Quoter. We got a lot of requests for that, so we're really happy that we shipped that. Also, in addition to that, we built supplier support. So what that means is in Halo, you can create a product, you can have pricing on that product, but you can also connect a supplier and have different unit price and unit cost and supplier skew and details like that associated with the supplier that's connected to the product. That's not really that common with the other PSA integrations we have, but we wanted to support that. So if you pull in that product from Halo, if there's a supplier on, associated with that product, 
we will pull the price and cost from that supplier, just making sure that we get the most accurate information possible into Quoter. And that can be leveraged on quote templates or your quote editor. So lots of functionality there. We also added purchase order number push. So you can capture the purchase order number from your end customer on your quote during quote acceptance. That's always been the case, but we'll push that over to Halo when the quote gets accepted as well. Just to save you that one you know, step where you got to copy and paste it over or go look in Quoter. We also added lead support. Now this one's pretty cool. I don't know that too many other quoting platforms integrated to Halo are doing this, but if you're leveraging Quoter to pull in information from a CRM, you're using HubSpot or Salesforce or Pipedrive or any of the CRMs we, we use uh, and integrate with, or if you're just typing in a person into Quoter and they're a new prospect and you're leveraging Quoter's functionality to be your CRM, then when we push that over to Halo, we won't create a brand new customer. We'll create the opportunity or we'll associate that quote to an existing opportunity, depending on what you've selected. But we won't go ahead and say, hey, this is one of your customers, because that can clutter up the interface for techs or people managing tickets. They don't want to see a whole bunch of customers in their PSA that aren't true customers. So when that quote or if that quote gets accepted, we will then turn that lead in Halo into a customer and we'll create the company object and the customer object, and all the associated data. But we're really just helping keep Halo as clean as possible. Yes. And it's one of those things that if there wasn't a solution for it, it would it would just hang out and keep things cluttered. And it would be one of those things you don't get around to addressing because there's 900 other things to do every day. That's right. Well, talking about extra work, though, I mean, the volume of work you're talking about for this Halo integration, and I know it's been ongoing over several months, um, is really impressive. Is, is there anyone on the team that's been working on that that you want to shout out or anyone on either of the two major releases for July? Uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, I think I've already shouted out to Jose in past product updates, but he did a lot of this work and it was a difficult cycle. You know, we threw a lot of scope at this uh, six week cycle and, and he really got through a lot of it. He was shipping value in, in probably week two or three and he got through almost everything that we were hoping to get through. There's a couple things I actually didn't mention a second ago. We didn't... Uh, I didn't mention quote PDF push. We did that as well. And we also did uh, sales order creation. So that's a checkbox in your integration settings, but you can also have accepted quotes push over to um, Halo and notify Halo that a sales order can be created at that point in time. So yeah, oh my God. huge amount of functionality there in a very short wow. time period. And uh, Jose really knocked it out of the park. That's excellent. And anything to tease for August? Anything exciting coming um, soon? Yeah, I mean, always. <laughs> There's always more coming. Uh, we are continuing to work on a few things on the reporting side of things. I don't want to tease that too much because it may take longer than we're expecting. But in the you know foreseeable future, we'll have some improvements there. Um, what is more uh, likely that I can talk about? Uh, the manager approval side of things, we're going to double down on that. So expect um, more improvements coming probably mid-August to uh, to that manager approvals area of functionality. And yeah, we're, we're also working on some improvements to the new quotes list, adding some more filters there. So yep, I mean, there's lots of, lots of cool things coming. And uh, as always, please uh, reach out to me if you want to set up a time, if you're a partner or, or even a prospect and you want to learn more about Quoter. But it has to offer or what we're building. I always love chatting with prospects and partners. So feel free to reach out. That's fantastic. And I think the fact that you're focusing on manager approval uh, enhancements in the summer is just it's just timely and wonderful because this is when people are taking time off. They want to know that they can go away and things are being taken care of or there's there's oversight even if they're not deeply involved in the process. We're liberating owners and managers uh, so they can go enjoy the beach without the stress of work on their back. So thanks, Ash. We'll talk to you next month. Thanks, Sarah.